Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. The relief has arrived. A chilly night ahead, but will the cool temperatures stick around all weekend? She was kicked out of office months ago. Now things are heating up in Macomb County to replace former embattled clerk Karen Spranger. And lost but not forgotten, arson investigators revealing what they think is to blame for destroying the Boblo boat, the SS St. Clair. Glad you're with us tonight at 11. Investigators tonight saying a welding mishap was likely what started the fire, and it didn't take long before the iconic boat was engulfed in flames. Yeah, the Detroit fire boat battled flames all afternoon before finally putting out the fire. The captain of the boat, the same man who once captained the Boblo boat in the 80s. Jermont Terry talked with him, and Jermont, he shared so many memories after he spent the entire day practically trying to save that boat. You're right, Kimberly. You know, it took hours to get the uh, fire out. Tonight, the fumes and the smoke are long gone. And over my shoulder, you can see the Detroit skyline. But sitting in the foreshadow, a charred piece of our city's history. Friday will go down as a smoky and sad day in history along the Detroit River. And you can see smoke as soon as we left the dock. The SSS St. Clair goes up in flames. While people from the shore looked on in disbelief, Ken Horner with Detroit Fire rushed to save the historic vessel. It just wasn't getting up here fast enough. The fire captain and his crew worked hard and long, but as Ken tried putting down the fire from the boat built in 1910, he witnessed his own memories burn. It's kind of peculiar to be here, um, sporting water. This is my very first vessel I ever stepped foot on. And like so many Detroiters, this ship is dear to his heart. I started as a deckhand in 1971, and I worked my way to the top. To become the captain of the vessel for two years. It's bittersweet, you know. I'm real fond of the Bobble. Now, decades later, he's back, looking at the charred shell, still able to see its beauty. I don't know if you ever saw the dance floor. It's all finished wood on this level here. There's all finished level wood, real shiny. The Boblo first sailed the 18 miles from Detroit to Boblo Island in 1898. Over the years, it brought smiles to families and even bonded lovers. Met my wife right here. Nearly 2,000 people would hop aboard and sail to the amusement park. It was a family thing and it was a Detroit thing. Those adventures lasted until the park closed in 1993. SS St. Clair sat empty for years, and like Detroit, it was on the comeback but the restoration attempts ignited the fire. She just couldn't survive. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. All we can do now is remember those fond memories of the uh, Boblo and the time on Boblo Island as well. Reporting live tonight, Jermont Terry, Local 4. Yeah. So many memories it, for so many people. But I'm still blown away by the captain. Oh, I know. Of the fireboat being the former yeah. captain of the Boblo. Amazing, yeah. All right, Jermont. Well, uh, the relief that we've been seeking from this heat has finally arrived tonight. A nice and comfortable night tonight. Andrew's in for Ben. Andrew, is it uh, time to give the AC a little bit of a break here? Oh, you bet. We're all going to be saving our pocketbooks tonight with temperatures that are now falling to the 60s, even the 50s at this hour. Look to our north, 52 degrees in Lapeer. Some might call this actually downright chilly, but compared to temperatures we had earlier this week for the past seven days, it does spell relief. 58 for our friends in Sandusky, already 54 in Port Huron. While we're still in the milder 60s here in Detroit, 68 degrees over at Metro Airport, but looking beautiful as we look at the downtown skyline. With clear skies overhead, Winds still out of the north northeast at around 12 miles per hour, pulling more cool air into the region. We'll see our temperatures right here in Motown in the 50s as well. Clear skies overhead, temperatures down to around 56 to 58 degrees, low 50s, even upper 40s by Saturday morning. But where do temperatures go from here? We'll talk more about that, your full weekend forecast in the next seven days and some heat returning in just minutes. A second passenger has died after a van carrying adults with special needs crashes in Monroe County. We're told a 66 year old woman died at the hospital. A 60 year old man was also killed in the crash. Eight others are hospitalized. Witnesses say the van pulled out in front of a truck at the intersection of Telegraph and Heist Road and that the truck had the right of way. The van was sitting here at the stop sign and and uh, I I knew he was going ahead and turning, and the next thing is we heard the big crash. They were all trapped. They had to use Jaws Life to get them all out, so uh, 
Uh, there's really nothing we could have did. Uh, they're all trapped. Again, eight people remain hospitalized, including the driver of the truck that hit the van. Schmidt been kicked out of office, but Karen Spranger and her brief but tumultuous tenure as Macomb County Clerk still hanging over the race to replace her like a bit of a cloud. So much so, Macomb County Executive Mark Hackle and the chairman of the Michigan Democratic Party are calling out what they believe are bad politics. Mara McDonald live in Sterling Heights tonight as a mailer apparently is already in the mail to voters, Mara. It sure is, Devin, and it will probably hit mailboxes here in Macomb County tomorrow morning. It is from the county executive himself. He is calling out a fellow Democrat in the clerk's race who he and several others believe is more than partially responsible for the Springer fiasco in the first place. When longtime Macomb clerk Carmela Sabaw bailed out of running for office at the last minute in 16, her friend and fellow political Fred Miller was ready to jump in the race, a move the political class in Macomb viewed as Sabaw handpicking her successor, which the Macomb County Executive flat out calls an attempt to rig the election in a mailer headed to Macomb voters. In this particular situation, you got a bad candidate who's running for an office that already tried to rig an election. It's simple to come out and say this isn't right, folks. Voters in Macomb didn't like the maneuver either, instead electing the unknown Karen Spranger to the seat over Fred Miller. What followed was a civil war in the clerk's office and Spranger being removed by the court. It was an absolute mess. Hackle is wholly uninterested in anybody involved in that mess, trying again for clerk, which is why he's coming out against a fellow Democrat, Fred Miller. Precisely what he did to former public works director Tony Morocco and took a lot of flack for it until the feds moved in on Morocco. Morocco is the target of a federal corruption probe and his top lieutenant Dino Bucci has now been indicted by the feds. Public officials need to start doing the same thing if they see that there's a problem with another candidate and bring it to the attention of the public, not being afraid of the backlash that might come along with it. Back here live, I reached out to Fred Miller tonight. My call was not immediately returned. And Devin, as you know, Macomb County politics is in many ways a small village. And Mark Hackle's mailer is already creating quite the waves. Back to you. And, and we mentioned the state uh, Democratic Party at the top of this. Uh, what does Brandon Dillon uh, think about what's going on? I spoke to the chairman tonight, and he is looking at this whole clerk's race here in Macomb with a very dim view. He thinks the behavior of some of the Democratic clubs here funding attack mailers, um, not the way to go. Mm. So you, there, there's a lot of displeasure right now at the way things are sort of rolling here. Yeah, Back fascinating. All right, Mara. A 27-year-old Royal Oak man has died after drowning in a pond at a Rochester Hills Park. Deputies say he was visiting friends at Thelma Spencer Park. His friends called 911 when they noticed he never returned from his swim. Lifeguards found him and pulled him out of the water and began CPR. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. The Oakland County Sheriff's Office is investigating. Uh, Clinton Township firefighters are asking for a millage renewal, but how they're doing it has netted them an investigation at the Secretary of State's office. Michigan Taxpayers Alliance is behind this complaint. The group sent documentation the millage group had submitted to the state, and on it they are using Clinton Township resources like email addresses and phone numbers, as well as listing township buildings as their headquarters, all of which uh, is illegal. It's blatantly against the law, but that's what worries me. I think the culture here has become such that they don't even think about it that way. They think of the taxpayers' money as their money. Secretary of State's office says they are investigating. Well, it was a beautiful night for some music and fun at the DIA. Oh, yeah. What an evening for it. The free event had a lot of fun family activities. Like here, they're making kites. Fantastic project. Uh, a lot of folks there to enjoy the music. Popular soul singer Jared Lawson. A perfect night for some uh, sketching on the front lawn as they continue to activate uh, everything around the DAA on Friday nights. Beautiful. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, a great night for it, like yep. you said. Uh, rescuers face a new challenge this weekend in Thailand. Yeah, what they are now up against is they try to rescue that young soccer team trapped inside a cave. A wild police chase involves a stolen tow truck. What we're learning about the driver and what he did moments before causing this violent crash. But first, a Detroit company keeping music alive in local churches. We'll go behind the scenes at this uniquely Detroit business to see how they do it next. <laughs> 